All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening where I'm going to be painting this cute little belted kingfisher. And I'm going to just jump right in and do this while I'm going. Uh, on my first layer here, let me tell you a little bit about the supplies that I am using. The paper that I've got here is from a roll of Bao Hong artist grade watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton and uh, I bought it just to give it a try. I didn't know what to expect from it. It's one of those items that I got a really good deal from Timu. Many people buy things off of Timu. I thought I would give it a shot and just to see what it's like. So far, I'm enjoying the paper. It's quite nice. Um, pay attention uh, to future videos. Uh, I'll be continuing to use the paper. I'll talk about it as, as I get a little bit more comfortable with it. The paints that I'm using today are my M. Graham watercolor paints. I love my M. Graham watercolor paints. They are um, very pigment dense. They wet very easily. Uh, they store easily. They're just, they're very lovely. They ground very fine. If you like a lot of granulation in your paints, maybe these M. Graham paints aren't the ones for you, but uh, I think they are quite nice. And the brushes that I'm using today are King Art Brushes. These are the 9020 series of brushes. They're the pointed rounds. Okay, and so on to the colors that I'm using. Well, at the moment on his, his beak, I'm just using a little bit of Payne's Gray. That's all that that is. And the blue that I'm using uh, for the color of the body of the bird. It's a little bit of ultramarine with a little bit of Payne's Gray. As we go along, I'll probably mix a little bit of neutral tint in there, along with maybe a little bit of sepia to, uh, to knock the color down just a little bit. Right, so a little bit on the, the branch that he's on. We've got some yellow ochre, I've got some Payne's Gray, a little bit of blue in there, a little, maybe a little bit of burnt umber to warm things up just a little bit. Trying to keep it a little bit warmer on the top side, a little bit colder on the bottom side, just to give a little bit of indication of some shadowing. There we go. All right, a little bit of blue down here. There we go. Underneath, maybe there's a few nooks and crannies in here that are causing just a little bit of shadow. I'm going to drop those on. There they are. And I'm just peeling a little bit of this color off to lighten it up a little bit to give it a little bit of a highlight without giving it a highlight. It's just a touch of some olive green on the bottom of this branch. And I'm not painting this in in any smooth fashion, kind of a staccato way of dipping some color on there. It'll give it some texture as though uh, there are some dents and indentations along that branch. Now, right on this guy's chest, he's got a slightly different color of blue. It's more of a gunmetal blue here. So a little less of the ultramarine, a little bit more of the Payne's Gray. And just a touch, just a touch of some neutral tint thrown into boot. And if I look at this, 
He's got a little bit of red mixed in there. So the red color that I'm using for this guy is a little bit of burnt umber along with a little bit of permanent alizarin crimson. It gives a nice beautiful uh, red shade that you can see. That's the, that's the basic recipe for the red that I'm using all across his body. There it is. It's a lovely, lovely uh, red color. And again, I'm not trying to put this in and be smooth and have these nice round edges. There's some feathers in there that are going to cause this color to um, have some, maybe like a little bit of a deckled edge here and there. So I'm just going to paint it in that way. Now I do like these little birds. I don't see too many of them around my house. I don't have any ponds or woodlands around here that I'd be able to see them at. But if I drove to the next town over, just south of where I live, they've got a, a little nature preserve there. And you can see these little belted kingfishers hanging out around the little pond that's over there. Quite nice uh, little birds. Just intensifying the color on his on his beak there, a little more Payne's Gray, a tiny bit of sepia mixed in, and then I'm mixing uh, the color uh, to go around his eye and on the top of his head. And again, the majority of this is Payne's Gray along with Ultramarine. But mixed in there is a little bit of sepia, just a touch of neutral tint. I want to start building out some colors on him. And I want to leave that little light spot just behind his eye. I don't leave that mostly there. I think that's going to do a lot to highlight some of his eye as we paint it. You'll see what I'm talking about as we, as we go along. Right here we are mixing up some ultramarine with a little bit of sepia to get a nice dark color. I do like to use my sepia. It's just another dark neutral. I've got the three darks on my palette. Sepia, neutral tint, and Payne's Gray. And depending upon the temperature that I want to mix, uh, I will use those you know, pretty interchangeably. I don't think there's too, too much difference if you're mixing those paints uh, with some others. Now up here, I like to think, I know these are feathers, but I like to think this is hair. And this guy's, this guy's kind of rolled out of bed without combing his hair. And he's gone off to, I guess, school or work. It depends upon how old you think this guy is. And he just hasn't quite uh, figured out that a comb would really help out. That's kind of how I think of the, these belted kingfishers' uh, uh, feathers on the top of their head. I think it's kind of a funny thing to think of that way. And yes, I roll my paper around, I turn it upside down and right side up and left and right. I really do that a lot. I don't have any formal training and I just turn the paper to make it as easy to put color on the page as I think possible. Typically that means getting the tip uh, right towards the edge that I want to paint against. Usually that works pretty well. Uh, sometimes it causes trouble if you're trying to watch the video. So if it's causing you a little issue, I, I, I totally apologize for that. 
Um, but just realize that uh, I'm doing it for the painting and the video is kind of secondary. But there's his flight feathers and his wing back there. You can clearly see that. He's got that on. And uh, now we've got some, a little bit of shading, a little bit of shadowing. Just, uh, just on, the, on his belly here. There we go. I want to indicate a little bit of that. Right, there's a dip in there where some feathers are. I've kind of learned with neutral tint that if I put it on wet on dry, that it will leave a hard line. It'll leave a quite a big mark there, and you'll never be able to take that away. You're always going to have the original line of what you put down there. So uh, if I need to put down some neutral tint just as neutral tint, then I, I try to pre-wet that area. And it helps by letting that paint run and go to wherever it wants to go and find its own home. There we go. That adds a little bit of definition to, uh, to this bird. And then I'm just going to continue with a little bit of that neutral down on these some of these tail feathers down here there we go all right this is in in a bit of shadow down here it's a little bit more let's let's draw that out that's probably a bit stronger than we needed but that's okay grab that and pull that down like i said that's all in shadow down there between his body and the and the stickies on All right, and white around his neck isn't really white. I mean, it probably is, but if we add a little bit of color there, it'll help it to uh, not stand out so starkly. I'm just continuing to add a little bit onto his beak here. A little sepia, a little Payne's gray, just a touch of burnt umber on there to warm it up a little bit there it is i think it's starting to look quite nice now i always think it's weird uh painting an animal and you paint the whole animal or i do anyways I paint the whole animal and i leave the eye to last and uh Along the way, it always looks a little funny. This guy's got just a, a hole there where his eye should be. I promise you, as soon as we get that eye painted on there, that it will start to uh, look a lot better. Here I'm just painting on some toes. He's, he's got his toes wrapped around, uh, wrapped around this little stick that he's on there. A couple of toes there and a couple of toes on here. Some on his left foot, some on his right foot. There he goes. And we'll come back and put a little, a little claw on the end of those two. All right. Now, I want to just flesh out a little bit more color on his chest. Drop that in probably not much more than that and then I'll just blend that out. There it is. Let's blend That out all the way There we go Nice and smooth a little darker at the top. That's okay right underneath those those neck feathers Make that stand out just a little bit That's the nice thing about putting some dark colors next to some light colors. It makes makes the light colors pop that much more. I would try to do that a little bit here. And of course, trying to give him some roundness with what we're doing too. Okay, a few extra details around his head. 
We're actually going to come back in and do a little bit more around here. I guess maybe we'll do it right now. There we go. Now, if I were to do anything slightly different on his head here, maybe, maybe I'd have given him a, a little bit of an undertone. So it's not just white um, under his head there. You see the highlights on his on his head. Maybe I would have made those, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a ochre color, maybe something, I don't know. I don't think it looks bad, I think it looks quite good. It's fairly close to the original. All right, here we go with his eye. This is gonna help give him some personality. This is just straight Payne's gray. Leaving a little bit there for a highlight. There we go, now he's got an eye, and now, now he's got a personality too. All right, I'm mixing up some more of my red. Again, it's permanent Lizard Crimson with a little bit of burnt umber. We need to darken some of that red as it goes around the side of his body where it, where it tucks up underneath his wing. Let's make that quite a bit darker underneath there. And we'll mix up a little bit more uh, blue-gray color, almost a black color, really dark for these tail feathers. Just bring that down. We'll add a little detail uh, later on to this. I just want to get these on. There they are. It's looking pretty good right now. Yeah, a little bit more detail on that beak. That bottom should be a little bit darker or just a little bit separated anyways from the top just to give it a little bit of dimension. And I think I'm going to paint the the wingtips. Oh, no, I'm going to go back into his head now. It's always interesting to me to do a voiceover on a video, regardless of how quickly after the video, after the, the painting I've done it, I, I always seem to get a few things out of order, what I do. I actually painted this two days ago, and I'm doing my voiceover now, obviously, and still forgotten a few things. All right, just a few lines that indicate a feather here and there. Let's go in that red and drop a few in. We don't need to do a lot. Just an indication of some feathers here and there. There they are. Well, we've got a couple minutes to go in this video, so I just want to mention that down below you can join my Discord channel. I post a monthly challenge there. We've got a few people joining all the time. Get some lively discussion there. It's quite a fun thing. I do do a live stream every Wednesday at 7 o'clock Pacific here on YouTube. Uh, that's always fun, a different topic every week. And at the end of the month, I do my version of the challenge that I pose to everybody. So if that sounds uh, like something that would be fun, please uh, please consider uh, joining or taking part. It'd be great to see you in one or both of those areas. And then there are links down there to my uh, social media also. Mostly I just do Instagram, but everything else is there. And links to my uh, coffee site. And a place where you can just donate if you want to help keep the studio open. No pressure, though. Couple last little details. And we are just about there. So I just want to say thank you to everybody for taking the time to 
watch me paint this little guy I love uh, kingfishers they are beautiful little birds and I want to say uh, thank you once again and have a great rest of your day